In Congress, we're joined now by a Republican congressman from Georgia and member of the House Intelligence and Rules Committee's Austin Scott. Congressman, thanks for being here. The deadline, September 30th, for the government to run out of money. Obviously, Speaker Johnson had this teed up uh, provision that would demand citizenship proof, the SAVE Act, be attached to it. That's now been pulled from the floor. Where do things stand uh, as you see it right now? And do you support uh, this this possible uh, uh, provision to demand citizenship proof? Uh, abs absolutely. And I've already voted for it. Uh, it's been sitting in, in the Senate, just as the appropriations bills that the House has passed have been sitting in the Senate. And Chuck Schumer won't bring any of those uh, pieces of legislation to the floor for a vote. So there's tremendous frustration on our part as House Republicans that we have passed uh, things that are important, not just this particular piece of legislation, but, but things like the funding for the military. And Chuck Schumer simply is sitting over there in the Senate and not having a vote on, on any of these things and then uh, pointing the finger at the House saying, why don't you do your job? Well, we've done our job. We've passed several of the appropriations bills. Uh, we have passed the bill that says that you have to be a United States citizen to vote in U.S. elections, and we know that Democrats are putting illegal immigrants on the on the voting rolls and allowing them to vote in municipal elections. Well, what coincides with some of the municipal elections is federal elections. And so once somebody's on the voter rolls, how does that person that is volunteering and working on the day determine if they are or are not eligible uh, to vote in a federal election? So you're better off not having people who are not U.S. citizens Mm -hmm. on the rolls, voting for any elections. And I, I support what Mike is doing. I think that our election should be reserved for U.S. citizens. But when it comes to, obviously, Speaker Johnson's pulled the bill from the floor because it doesn't have the support. And now we have former President Trump weighing in, saying that if it isn't attached, then he should shut the government down. We can show you what he took to his truth social, saying if Republicans in the House and Senate don't get absolute assurances on election security, they should in no way, shape or form go forward with a continuing resolution on the budget. The Democrats are trying to stuff voter registrations with illegal aliens don't let it happen close it down those last words there could you congressman scott support closing the government down uh, i i do not want a government shutdown i will tell you tell you that i disagree with president trump on this particular issue we have a very slim margin in the house of representatives we have very close races some of which were won by less than 100 votes and so when you get to those 50 50 districts i do think a government shutdown even though it would be certainly just as much the fault of the Democrats as the Republicans, I think the Democrats, and they want the shutdown because they know it works to their favor in the elections, uh, I think it hurts us as Republicans in our close and competitive seats. And so what I would uh, advise President Trump is, uh, I certainly still think he's gonna be elected President of the United States. I want him to be the President of the United States. If, if the Democrats have control of the House of Representatives, they will simply sabotage his presidency the way they sabotaged it the last time. Congressman, let's turn to the battle in Georgia. And in the last hour, you may have seen we were doing a, a full screen thing with the, the power rankings. And one of the significant things we found is that Georgia, the state of Georgia, which leaned Republican when Biden was a nominee, now has been moved back to the toss up states. Our power rankings are done through the uh, looking at uh, the number of polls that have recently come out. What's happening in Georgia that Harris is getting some support, and where do you see the race standing? Well, well, first of all, I'll, I will tell you this. We are a rural state, and so uh, I need President Trump to, to come to the state of Georgia. I need him to talk about the value of agriculture, both from the standpoint of, of what it means from a national security standpoint and from an economic standpoint. And, and that's the one area that I will tell you, uh, Griff, that, that I don't think – I don't think we are capitalizing on as Republicans in our presidential campaign is talking about the value of agriculture. We are the party that is going to support the American farmer. And so Georgia has a tremendous number of farmers. We have a huge agriculture economy. Uh, ultimately, I think I think that part of our economy in the state of Georgia is going to support the Republican president because we know he supports us. But, man, it should be nice to get him down here to Farm Bureau and, and remind the Georgians out there 
what he did for Georgia's farmers. Well, there's a chance he could be watching now, and hopefully we'll take your advice to come down. Just quickly before we run out of time, Congressman, we're going to be talking with some economic folks a little bit later in the show. And one of the things I want to point out, but I'll do it here first, and that is under the inflation that we saw, agriculture was particularly uh, a rise of more than 20 percent inflation uh, for the agricultural sector. Uh, how bad have farmers been? hit in the last four years? Very, very bad. The increased cost of labor, the increased cost of diesel, seed, fertilizer, all of our inputs have gone up exponentially, and yet the price of the commodities that we grow is, is actually down. And so we're looking at widespread economic losses throughout all of rural America. And I'll tell you, you know, the tax base for our school systems, our cities, our counties, it all depends on, on that agricultural sector being profitable. And so our farmers are in trouble. It's not just in the state of Georgia, it's in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a Secretary of Agriculture right now that has not been supportive of production agriculture. Obviously, if Donald Trump is in there, he's gonna put somebody back in, uh, into that department at the USDA that supports our, our farmers. And that's what we need. I mean, key to this is having, uh, when we have these economic collapses in rural America and the ag economy, is having a Secretary of Agriculture that actually supports the American farmer. And we simply don't have that in Secretary Vilsack. So, so President Trump, I guarantee you, will appoint a Secretary of Agriculture that supports the American farmer. And that's one of the points that we've got to be out there making is we're, we're, we're going to put secretaries in place if you give Donald Trump the presidency that actually take care of the American farmer. 